I knew it. I knew it would come. I said it would come. Deja vu. Wow, it's finally happened. Games Workshop gave us this long-awaited FAQ. I've been calling for it for a long time. Other members of the community have been calling for it for a long time. And there's a lot to unpack. We've got points changes. We've got new units. Lord of Hubris. Go buy the Lord of Hubris. I love the Lord of Hubris. We've got quality of life updates. We've got Errata's two abilities. We've got FAQ updates. We've got basically, I think, everything we could have asked for. We're going to look at that today. I'm not going to look at the new units that have gone in. You guys can check that out yourselves. I'm going to be focusing on the points updates. I'm going to be focusing on the Errata's. I'm going to be focusing on the FAQs. So that's something we're going to go through. We're going to talk a little bit about what I think the impact of the game is going to be. But before we get into that, as always, if you like what you see, you want more of this kind of content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to give me some support, you can join me here on YouTube as a member. You can join me over on Patreon. You can join me over on Streamlabs. You'll get to see behind the scenes content. You will get to see stuff before it's released. You'll get to have a say into the kind of stuff that I produce in the future. But yeah, look, we've been waiting for long enough. It's been a year and a half now. Let's go to it. Let's take a look at the changes. Okay, start with very quick. What did I think needs to be done to the game? I've got a video about that. You can check it out up here uh, where I basically talk about all the different things, why it needs to be done, what it needs to be done. This is the kind of the final Venn diagram of changes I think that needed to be made. So cuts to efficient chaff, big stats need to be nerfed, buffs need to be reined in. And you know what? I was pretty right, I think. I didn't get everything 100% right, but I think broad strokes... Games Workshop did a really good job on this one. They seemed to have an understanding of what's going on in the game, of the different problem areas that we have at the moment, and they managed to address all that, at least for me. So yeah, I am extremely happy with this, and I think it's going to be a really big shakeup in the meta going forward. All right, so we're going to start with Karajan Overlords. You can see it here, right? Argonaut Company up five points, Aether Cannons up 20 points, the Admiral up 10 points, the Thunderer with Mortar up 15 points. This is basically a long time coming, right? We've always said Argonaut Company, way too cheap. I think Aether Cannon, way too effective for what it does. Again, with the Admiral, its stats are basically too high for the points cost that you are paying. I've been in favor of having smaller points increases on things like your chaff, like your Arcanaut company, and then larger points increases on the big power pieces that you're only going to take one or two of in your warband. Um, the reason for that is that if you're going to be taking five Arcanaut company, for example, a five point increase of all of those company is 25 points less that you'll be able to use during your actual list building. Two way for cannon, admiral, bunch of company list now you'll probably find you're down by about 60 or 70 points versus what you had before. And what does that mean? It means that your lists are generally going to be one or two fighters smaller. So what that does for us is it means that you'll see far less of this efficient chaff on the tabletop. And then on top of that, if you do want to go hard into Aether Cannons, your warbands are going to be even smaller. And that means that they effectively have some kind of weakness um, on the tabletop while you're playing. I think Aether Cannons are 130 points. I think they could have gone harder on Aether Cannons, to be honest. I'm looking at something like the Arbaluster at 190 points. It basically fulfills the same kind of role. I see why they increased the points cost of the Mortar as well. At the moment, the Mortar isn't seeing a super amount of play simply because Aether Cannons are so good. But once you bump up the Aether Cannons to 130, the Mortar suddenly becomes a much more interesting prospect. But to go with that, what else did they do? They changed Fight for Profit. Fantastic. Okay, so we all know what Fight for Profit does. The change is going to be until the end of the battle round add plus one to the attack's characteristic of melee attack actions made by friendly fighters when they're within three inches. And if this fighter is carrying treasure or within three inches of an objective, you get plus one to the attack's characteristic of all attack actions made by those fighters instead. So massive hit to that. So no longer will you be able to just deploy You've got your guys, you pop fight for profit, get plus two attacks or get plus one attack. You physically have to go to the piece of treasure or you have to go to the objective in order to get that bonus attack. And even then, it's not going to be as effective. I'm in favor of this change. 
it would have been really sad if Games Workshop just looked at it and said, okay, well, we're just going to have a flat plus one attack to your melee attack actions, kind of like every other one of these abilities in the game. I think this still allows the fighters to be taken as allies, which is interesting, but I think you'll be wanting to look at some of the more faster allies of Crichton Overlords if you want to use Fight for Profit on your ranged attacks specifically. Next up, increases to Demons of Nurgle. We all know they're really good. We all know Plague Bearers are fantastic. Plague Bearers now 60 points. I think this brings them much further in line with what they should be and supposed to be based on their stat line. It's always been the case that Toughness 4, 10 wounds, 3 attacks with a crit 4, basically being self-sufficient, not needing any dice has always been too good. They have that movement three, so they would have had that movement three break. But it looks like what they're doing from the Arcanauts and from some of the Soul Black Gravelord changes that we'll be seeing in the future, that they are really trying to address that movement three discount that these very cheap chaff get. So play bears up to 60. I still think they're playable. They're still really, really good. They're just not as oppressingly good as they used to be. Nerdring's gone up to 115 from 110. If you see them, you generally see them in ones. But I crunched the numbers on this. Nurgling Swarms are some of the most efficient fighters in the game. Basically, if Plague Bearers went up to 60 points, suddenly Nurglings look even more efficient in comparison. I know they're at start at 105 and now at 115, so it's not even like you could spam them, but six attacks with one free damage profile, 20 wounds, only 115 points. That's very good value. It's still good value, it's just a little bit less. They've also sorted out Shatterers and they sorted out Mortec Guard, which is excellent. You, you can see it. All of these very cheap chaff that people were complaining about forever, they've increased the points cost on. So Shatterer's gone up to 60 points. Again, same reasons for the Arcanaut Company, because you could just take a lot of them. They were very, very efficient for the points cost you got. 10 wounds, movement 4, range 2, 3 attacks with a crit 4. It's very good. They're still very good. They're just a little bit less efficient. And similarly, Mortec Guard of all flavors. No longer can you just spam out 50, 55 point Mortec Guard. Mostly Toughness 5. Again, 10 wounds. Very difficult to push off of objectives. Soul Black Grave Lords. Here it is. Zombie's gone up. Skeleton's gone up. Grave Guard with Great Blade's gone up. Crypt Shield Grave Guard has also gone up. Your basic chaff has gone up by 10 points. Your Grave Guard have gone up by 5 points. I'm glad to see they did not push the Grave Guard up by 10 points to match the basic chaff, because I think they're a lot more fair than like your basic skeletons and your basic zombies. Skeletons at 50 points are still very, very cheap, but now we've kind of got this rebalancing where the very cheap line is. No longer do we have any of these 40-point chaff units that will be able to just fill out some numbers um, for your Warband. Again, in effect, this will reduce the amount of size that these warbands have, maybe by one or maybe by two fighters, which is something that I can kind of get behind. I think it gives mid-range fighters a lot more of a chance to breathe and to do things. Like I said, I mentioned that in my last video. This whole array of patches seems to be to encourage people to bring more mid-range by bringing in the efficiency of those very cheap chaff fighters and the stuff right at the top, which again we are going to look at. Sons of Elmore, they have fixed Thane, Marshall, Helmore. They got points bumps to bring them in line with the other Graveguard increases, and they also got the Elite Remark. So now they are not cheating their way into maximum wounds when they come back to life. I think this one was a long time coming anyway. It should have been addressed when Grave God were addressed. Sons of Elmore, still very efficient for what you get. Still decent chaff units if you want to take them, but now they're just not an auto-include for Death War bands that don't have those really cheap chaff. Similarly, Kixie Attacker. So Starblood Stalkers are basically the order version of the Sons of Elmore. You take them if you want cheap chaff. They haven't addressed any of the other Starblood Stalkers. Otterpassel, Tok, Wanshi, all those guys, they stay exactly the same. But now if you want to bring in the Starblood Stalkers, you're going to be paying 10 points more. So he's effectively the tax for you to take the Starblood Stalkers. I still think he's decent, 135 points. I still think the Starblood Stalkers are really decent for the points that you're paying. But now you're going to be paying a little bit more to bring those better chaff into your warband. Games Workshop has taken steps to address Destruction Soup. We can see that here. The Brute Boss with Claw Brute Smasher, Brute Boss with Chop Up also. Both gone up in points by 10. Now they are now 205 and 200. Again, the Ard Boy Boss, very efficient for what you got. He's gone up by five points. And Ard Boys have gone up by five points to 85, specifically the ones with Ard Boy Choppers. In my view, they're the most efficient ones. 4414 damage profile, very good. 15 wounds, awesome. Toughness 4, awesome. What this effectively means is that Destruction Soup 
it's not dead. I'm, I'm not going to say that it's dead because it very much isn't. But it does mean that Disruption Soup are going to have to start making harder choices in order to try and field the different kinds of numbers that they were fielding before. In Disruption Soup, you bring in any hard hitter from Destruction, maybe Crusher, Tyrant, Gutlord, whatever you want. You bring some kind of Brute Boss because Brute Boss has the Umesson ability, which is devastating against Hordes and even against mid-range fighters. Your 100 point, 115 point, 10 wound, 12 wound dudes. It basically shuts them down. And then you bring a Brugit to back all of that up and to give it extra attacks. And you put that in basically whatever destruction basic warband you wanted to do. So now you're going to be paying more points for being able to do that. I can get behind it. Uh, our boys are still very good at 85. The Brute Boss and the Brute Boss with Chopper are still very good for the points cost you're paying. A 4, 5, 2, 5 damage profile or a 3, 6, 3, 6 damage profile. It's... Nothing to sneer at. They're still good. It's just now you're going to be paying a few more points for them. Brugit's taken a hit. Goodbye, Brugit. Well, no, not goodbye, Brugit. Um, it's now 90 points. So this is where me and Games Workshop kind of differ. I would have limited the Brugit to Gits only to give Gits a bit of a boost because the Goblins themselves aren't doing amazingly good. There are other better core units. You can play like Cruel Boys, for example, for your Destruction Soup Warbands. They chose to just put attacks on it. It is an ally, so I guess that's why they did it. So it still can be allied if you want to go down that route. But 20 points more. If we take the Odd Boy changes that have already gone in and the Brigade changes, that's 30 points so far that you have to find if you want to run Destruction Soup. So already we're down one fighter, which makes things a lot fairer against that stuff and prog. You were too cheap. You're now 65. Goodbye, Prog. Other okay. Kingdoms. Again, they are pushing up the points cost of stuff with these really big 4, 8, 5, 10 damage profiles, which is very positive for me. One of the big problems that Stormcast has, if they're going to be putting a 6 fighter warband on the table and they run into a Tyrant, the Tyrant will delete the Stormcast. And that's basically it. A Tyrant or a Crusher or a Gut Lord runs into one of these fighters, they die and it's basically wasted points. And there's no way two or even three of those fighters are going to be able to match up to Crusher, Gut Lord, whatever during a game. They'll just fall over and that'll be the end of that. So what they've done is they've increased the points of all of these three guys by 10. Again, make the warband smaller, make things a bit fairer. I can get behind this. I, I think that's absolutely fine. I think it really means that you're going to have to make tough choices when building your Destruction Suit Warbands. And again, Quiv up 15 to 60 points. This is basically a stealth tax on Hrothborn Mantrapper. Now, if you want to bring him and Quiv, you're not going to have the really, really cheap chaff unit you would have had before. And you won't be able to have Quiv just handing out extra attacks to Hrothborn just as he comes. So I think this is positive. If you want to bring Hrothborn, you still can. It'll just cost you 300 points to do so. Formoy Crusher and the Myrmidon, they've gone up by 10 points. I think it was a long time coming. The Formoy Crusher is basically everywhere. It's like if you're playing Chaos, you're bringing a FOMO and you're bringing a Varen Guard of some descriptor. And then you can put that in basically any warband. Formoy Crusher's gone up by 10. The Myrmidon had to go up also because otherwise, if you're just going to up the points cost of the Formoroid, people are going to take a Myrmidon anyway. So that's gone up. It's fine. It's a good change. Again, big stats to try and bring in the top end so that mid-range fighters have a little bit more of a chance to shine. Similarly, we have Stormcast Thunderstrike. Annihilator Prime's gone up by 10 points. Grand Hammer's gone up by 10 points. Meteor Hammer's gone up by 10 points. I know Thunderstrike players are going to complain a lot about this. Similarly, with the Formoroid Crusher, the Annihilator Prime and Meteor Hammer is basically a ubiquitous ally, I think, in Order Warbands. It's got massive stats. 4535 five is a really big damage profile. Not a lot can stand up to it at 180 points. At 190, you've got to start making these kinds of choices. Do I bring the Annihilator Prime or do I keep my numbers up? Similarly with the Grand Hammer and the Meteor Hammer, they were too cheap, right? 130 points and 145 points. The stats that you're bringing, 20 wounds of toughness, 7, 3, 5, 3, 5, they could basically run over most things. Now they're still very good. They're just not as efficient as they used to be. I still think Stormcast Thunderstrike are going to be running around about six fighters. There are other options for them to get cheaper fighters. I think that it's not going to be as common for them to run seven fighters anymore 
but I do think that with the changes to the chaff units on the bottom end and the big boys on the top end, it gives six fighter, seven fighter warbands much more of a chance to kind of do things and to move around the battlefield and to make more of an impact. Again, with the warrior chamber, up 10 points on Retribute Prime, up 10 points on the Paladin with Star Soul Mace. Exactly the same reasons. Paladin 3548, it'll hit a thing, it'll fall over, it'll die. 155 points, very cheap for the stats you're getting, especially those defensive stats. Toughness 6 means a Formoroid is winning on 4s, and 20 wounds will keep you around for a while with that Toughness 6. The Retributor Prime, I think this was done for completeness, 4535 five damage profile. So basically the same as your Annihilator Prime. And if the Annihilator Prime's gone up, so does the Retributor Prime, just to make sure that it's kind of even across the board. Okay, the winners, who got points cuts? There seems to be a lot of quality of life updates. Some of these I wouldn't have necessarily gone for. Some of them are surprises to me. I feel like they could have done a whole bunch more, but you know, it's a good start. The hits to those chaff units and the really heavy fighters is already more than what I uh, would have imagined would have come out of an FAQ and errata. So these are just icing on the cake, really. We've got the pets from the Asagigan True Blades and the Claws of Karanak. They go down by 10 points a piece just to make things a little bit easier. I do think they're, they're expensive, right? 190 points for both of them. They're not even comparable to each other. The Hound of Wrath especially is real expensive. The Hound of Wrath goes down from 190 to 170 with a big chunk off of his points cost. I think a 170 is still probably a little expensive considering it's only got 18 wins. But then it starts to compare to some of those bespoke warband leaders favorably. So I quite like that. And it's also got Fire Breath and I always like Fire Breath. Similarly with the Curse Blood, it's gone down a little bit. I think the Curse Blood's abilities are pretty cool. The Broodmaster has gone down from 200 to 180. It is an 18 wound bespoke leader so yeah i think this was a long time coming five attacks is really good but strength 424 very very average so i'm happy that the broodmaster has gone down it's nice i like it next up we have quality of life updates for corvus cabal toast you got it shrink talent is most cheaper now swooping attack also has changed so previously you make your bonus move if you finish three inches or more lower from your starting position you make your bonus attack action now uh, you make your move and if it's two inches or more lower, they make their bonus attack action. I'm pretty sure that this is for all the heart of Gerterrain. Because if you're standing on the lowest or the middle level of the bridges going over, you are just under three inches and you will never get to use sweeping attack. Because three inches is a long way when we're talking about verticality and war cry. Two inches makes it a little bit easier. I would have gone even further than this. I would have gone something like if the freighter jumps off a thing and it jumps two inches then get your bonus attack action that would allow it to climb up onto things jump off of things and get attack actions that way it looks like they didn't want to do that so i mean it's a small buff but I mean, it's course cabal right course cabal if i remember do have 65 point chaff which are unaffected by any of the changes that's going on so they should look more favorably now compared to some of the other chaff units that we've been talking about that got hits so maybe that maybe that'll improve for them also same thing happened to death from above they finished to move two inches instead of three inches and they get the bonus strength and they get the bonus attack action again it's better because of the heart of gathering cypher lords mirror blades are down by 10 points a piece glaive has gone down to 125 Dueling Swords has gone down to 120. I'm really hoping that with the changes to the big guys and the changes to the little guys, these middling mid-range fighters will have a bit of more time to shine. I do think Mirror Blades were overcosted anyway. They do actually have decent stats. Like, they're fine. But they only have Toughness 3 and they have 10 wounds. So hopefully, if those bigger warbands that are bringing in those cheap chaff for the big fighters get a little bit smaller. Maybe it'll make the Cypher Lords and Corvus Cabal and all of these kind of warbands with that elvish profile, um, maybe it will give them a little more breathing room uh, just to move around the battlefield and to apply that pressure when they can. On top of that, Cypher Lords got a new shadowy recall. Previously, you had to pick a Cypher Lords minion within 12 inches. You could remove it from the battlefield and then you teleport within a number of inches equal to the value of this ability. Now it's just, you pick a minion. The only minions you're gonna be able to get are Cypher Lord minions anyway, so that's fine, no change. You remove it from the battlefield, so there's no range restriction now on the teleport, which is actually really nice. You can teleport people from anywhere and that minion is set up on the platform or on the floor within six inches. 
So that's potentially pretty far. I think Cyphalods <laughs> have now one of the better teleports in the game. They can teleport people back to them. So that could be interesting. I want to watch out for Shadow Refall. I know not many people play Cyphalods because they do have those really weak chaff. But yeah, this, this, this might be a thing. More quality of life updates. Seraphon. Their skinks are really bad, right? 70 points for that stat line. Not going anywhere. They've got a little points break. They're now 65. Similarly, the Moonstone Club and Buckler down to 65. Okay, that's absolutely fine. It now gives Seraphon a decent chaff unit to go with all of those really cool units that they just got. So I think this is fine. Same as Rottmeyer Creed. We've got Carrying Catchers with Snatcher and Impalers. Numerically, they're pretty good. The problem is not when compared to Bloated Ones because Bloated Ones are just better. But a lot of people like to play solely within uh, one faction. So I think encouraging people to use carrying catchers now, their profiles aren't bad. They got 12 wounds, they got toughness four. So they are comparing to things like Bestigore. So the carrying catcher with Snatcher Hook is very much like a Bestigore with that stat line. So yeah, hopefully that will make things a little bit easier for those people who have built carrying catchers. I'd still build the Impaler because the Impaler is just better with a 3425 damage profile. So I still build that. Shadow Stalkers, K9 Shadow Stalkers, they got, they got some updates. Dark Flame Warlocks with repeater crossbows. They're down five points. I'm pretty sure that this is because of Trailblazers. Trailblazers are 90 points with movement four, but otherwise the exact same stat line, but Trailblazers have some very good abilities behind them. So a little bit of a points break for the Warlocks, I think is pretty nice. Shroud Blade with Umbral Spear, down 5 points. The Slaughter Blades are down by 10 points and 15 points, respectively. Shadow Stalkers is one of those weird warbands. They're kind of just going to do what they're going to do. I like 100-point Dark Flame Warlocks. I think that's pretty neat. I quite like their Shadow Queen, Shroud Queen. Is that what it's called? I think. I think she's pretty neat. So maybe we can do something with that kind of warband build. I do like the fact they all have movement 6 and they're paying a little bit less for that now, especially on some of their more mid-rangey fighters. So yeah, hopefully this will help Shadow Stalkers just a little bit. Zine Charcanites. We know the Karakakalites are not worth 90 points, 95 points. They know that also, apparently, in his workshop. So thank you very much. They're much cheaper now. That range attack is not worth the extra 20 points, whatever, that they're paying. So they're a little bit cheaper. Now people with Karakaka Lights can play them and basically not feel super bad all the time. Okay, on to something I am super excited about. A mini, I say mini rework. Um, six units have changed um, for Nighthaunt, which is very good. They've got points breaks basically across the board. Knight of Frows and Ethereal Steed is always compared to the 235 point Dreadblade Harrow because it basically has the same stats apart from a few more wounds. So that's a lot cheaper. 20 points cheaper is a big points break for it. I've been using the Knight of Frows and Ethereal Steed quite a bit recently in my test games. I've given it toughness 5 and I'm basically using its double to run into things, kill them and to get its wounds back to make this big unkillable almost-ish roadblock that you can run into swarms of chaff and just hold them up for the whole game. So I'm really happy that we got points break here. Again, with the Knight of Shrouds, it's fine. The Knight of Shrouds was Games Workshop's big, here is my Night Haunt general piece model kind of thing. It's way too expensive at 190. They're all paying for that movement six. Games Workshop seems to know that, so they got a break. Dress have Haridans. They got a five point points break. Haridans were always efficient anyway. Their main problem is that they have strength three and counter exists. So that's really what was stopping them uh, being played. I think at 100 points, it makes things a little bit more interesting for them. The 5313 damage profile, when combined with the thing that we're going to see in just a minute, I think is pretty good. Similarly, with the Slasher Crone, a 5324 damage profile is potentially a lot of damage. She's kind of made a paper, but she's only got 15 wounds, so I think 150 points is fine. A small points break for the Mymon Banshee, already one of the more efficient things in the list. But 3424 damage profile, 115 points, kind of brings her more in line with these other kinds of fighters. Nighthorn is still expensive. Your cheapest guy is still a Chain Rasp, and the Chain Rasp is now 70 points. So at least you'll be able to do things with the Chain Rasp. It still has movement 6, it still has flight, and it still has toughness 4. So I think those are things that are going to work for Nighthaunt. Hopefully now you'll be able to build actual decent side warbands. I think between the Haridans, the Slasher Crones, your Banshees, that'd be pretty good. They already have some pretty decent heroes in the Briar Queen and the Wilder of the Blade. So I think they've got that covered. So we're almost there for Nighthaunt, I feel. I think there are a few more things that they can tweak. 
But yeah, possibly, I'm, I'm going to test them out. We'll see how they go, especially with this Frightful Touch. So they've changed it. So they've changed Frightful Touch. They've removed the Destroyer rune mark. Previously, Frightful Touch was only usable by Tomb Banshees and by Spirit Hosts. And I forget their names, the, the, the guys on the steeds with the sides. Now anyone can use it, which is real interesting. As a reminder, Frightful Touch basically means all hits become crits. It's on a triple, so that's interesting. But now things like the Dread Saitaridon can Frightful Touch with its five attacks at crit three. The Slasher Crone can Frightful Touch. The Maimon Banshee can fright like everything can frightful touch now on a triple. I think that massively increases the amount of damage, or potential damage anyway, that Nighthawk can do. So I think that's pretty good. But then on top of that, if you have the destroyer room marks, if you had frightful touch before, you get plus one attacks until the end of your activation. So spirit hosts go up to seven attacks, strength three, okay, whatever. Every hit counts as a crit. So Putting that crit blessing on spirit hosts now suddenly makes them a lot better because they get the bonus attack and they get the boost. Similarly, on the Tomb Banshee, the Banshee has four attacks and it's got crit four. It's only strength three, but with the boosted Frightful Touch, it goes to five attacks. If you decide to put strength on these guys, that's a very different prospect completely. So I'm happy with this. I think there's a lot that can be done with new Frightful Touch. I'm excited to take a look at it. Again, Slasher Crones, Dress High Paradons. I think that might be a thing. What can I say? Okay, Hands of Wanchi. Are they fixed? Maybe? Possibly? Are they better? Very much so. Thank you, Games Workshop. Whoever's listening, I'll take it. Thank you very much. Um, dart Pipes are now basically a lot cheaper. So the Alpha with Dart Pipe is down 10 points. The Hornblower with Dark Pipe is now ten, down 10 points. The Normal Skink is down 10 points. The Hornblower with Moonstone Club is now down 5 points. And the Skink with Moonstone Club is now down 5 points. Now, if we remember, the reason why no one takes any of this stuff is because they normally cost 70. And for 5 points more, you can take a one Cheese Claw. And a one Cheese Claw is such a step above any of this that there's no reason why you should take this. I think at 60 points, a Chameleon Skink with Dart Pipe is a 15 point points break against Hwanji's Claw. So I think that's worthwhile. You can do very large warbands now. One of the problems that I found during list building is that there was basically too much stuff that you had to put in there, but you also have to keep your numbers up. If you play Hunters of Hwanji and you aren't out activating your opponent, you basically lose because your guys are made of paper. 60 point Skinks with Movement 6 and the Slippery Reaction. I think is real good. I think these things are Moonstone Club, 10 points cheaper than your Hwanchi's Claw. I think that could be really good. They have the Toughness 3, they have the bonus ability, which is nice. So I think this opens up a lot for Hunters players. And I think it opens up a lot in their list building. If you're running, say, an 8-man Hunters list or a 9-man Hunters list, this gives you the scope to go to 10-man or 11-man fairly easily because you can make those savings by downgrading a couple of those Hwanchi's Claw into basic skinks. On top of that, they changed the Slippery Reaction. There were a lot of questions around Slippery, exactly how it works. Do you take the damage? When do you take the damage? How far away can you be to use it? Because technically it's a disengage. So they changed both Slippery and Smart Step Backwards. Smart Step Backwards is the reaction for Wilder Court Hunters. It's basically the same thing. They've changed it to a fighter can make this reaction after they've been allocated total damage points by a melee attack action. And then this fighter makes a bonus disengage action. They're saying uh, you make the reaction after you've been allocated total damage points. So this clears up exactly how much damage you take. And then on top of that, there was an FAQ that went through to these kinds of abilities, essentially saying that you cannot use the ability outside of one inch range. This kind of goes against the way that people were playing it, and including myself, whereby you were using your bonus disengage action against any melee attack action as the slippery requirement effectively replaced the one inch range requirement for disengage. They've decided not to do that. They've cleaned that up. So now it's just, if you're within an inch, you make your disengage. Personally, I think that combined with the points decreases that Hunters of Huanchi already got, I think this is basically a sidestep in power for them. Not being able to use the reaction against things like spears, two inch, three inch range fighters is pretty 
big because that was one of their big play styles, getting within range, blocking people, and then taking the damage and then running away, even if you're at two inches or three inch range. They won't be able to do that now. It has to be a one inch. I think those weaker fighters, so stuff like the blowpipes that just got decreases, stuff like the bonus arm skinks that just got decreases, I think they're going to be feeling this the most because they don't necessarily have the ability to sit at to inch range, get hit, and then run away. But yeah, overall, if this is how they're going to clarify things, it's how they're going to clarify things. I think that Hunter's as a whole, are just as strong as they used to be. I think they are more flexible than they used to be, just not particularly any stronger or any worse. Okay, so we have some clarifications. Gore Chosen of Drum, overhead smash off the big dude, the Gore Hulk. It works. So now you have to jump and then move two inches or more vertically downwards to get the ability, whereas previously the fighter had to fall. There was a question where if you jump, you actually fall. I guess this gets around that wording because now falling is not included in the ability itself. So that does clear that up. So you do your jump and then you move vertically downwards. So that's absolutely fine. His ability works now, so that's good. You, so you can just jump off of things. It also works within two inches. Similarly with the Corvus Cabal changes, makes things a lot easier. I like the Gore Hulk anyway. I think he's pretty good. So this is only a boost for him. I do have to ask the question though, why Corvus Cabal weren't also changed to have this kind of ability where they jump and then they move vertically downwards during that activation. It would kind of allow Corvus Cabal to climb up onto things, leap off of things all within one action and make their whole gimmick about jumping off of things a little bit easier. It seemed like Games Workshop didn't want to take that route, so that's fine. That, that's that's fine for them. Corvus Cabal got their changes anyway. So yeah, but I mean, good, good, good on Good on the Gore Hulk. Congratulations. I think he's real good. And hopefully with the points increases that went through to stuff like former crushes and whatever, all of these secondary big chunky damage fighters, uh, maybe they can get a look at. Pink Horrors also, they have changed the room mark required on Pink Horrors. So now they can split. Absolutely fine. This has just been a thing since the compendium was released like two years ago. So they fixed it. Good stuff. Well done. Cruel Boys Monster Killers, the Saw em Up ability has a ton of questions around it. They've cleaned all of that up. So you're gonna roll your dice equal to the value of the ability to a minimum of two, and you make a single group of two or more dice in consecutive numerical order. That means if you roll a one, two, three, and then a five and a six, you only get to make one group. You use your one, two, three, it's the highest one. So that's the damage you're gonna do. You don't get two groups to do stupid amounts of damage. Quest of Soul Sworn, Face Me Cowards, now lasts until the end of the battle round, so it's not forever. You can't use it in the first battle round when no one's near you and then suddenly it keeps on going. You can't use it in the first game of a tournament and it runs to the end of the tournament. So it just runs to the end of the battle round. It's consistent like every other ability of this type. Okay, and that is it from the big Summertime Games Workshop FAQ. Amazing, amazing, amazing. They seem to have covered especially on the points reduction side of things, everything that the community has been calling for for the past year or so. And then with a bunch of quality of life improvements thrown in. So I'd like more of that, Games Workshop, if you're listening, more of these quality of life improvements to get some of these weaker warbands up to scratch. I quite like that. I think there's still a ways to go on Nighthaunt, but I'm going to test it. At least, at least you can make decent sized Nighthaunt warbands now. So that's something that I'm very happy with. This is going to be a massive shakeup to the meta. I feel, I really hope that the predictions that I made kind of come true. And with the squeezing of very cheap, efficient chaff fighters and very strong high damaging fighters, that the mid range are gonna get a bit of more chance to shine. That'd be really good. So that's something I'm very happy with. I'm super cool, super, super stoked to play in this format. I've got a tournament coming up, so hopefully we'll be able to play it in that. But yeah, that's it from me for today. As always, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know. Let me know down in the comment section below what you think about these changes, the quality of life improvements, the errata that they've made. That's something I really want to hear. I've been looking forward to it a long time, and I hope you have also. But yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Aitan. This has been Off Meta Musings. See you next time.